Good morning, Wheaton College family. I'm so grateful for this very different opportunity because usually I'm in music mode. But I need to tell you about um, Pastor Calvin Egler, who always said to me, <laughs> he's going to be with the Lord now. But because of my last name, shout out to McMickens family. My last name was, my maiden name was McMickens. And so a teacher in high school started out calling me Mickey when he would call attendance. And so my husband kept that on, as well as my college um, buddies. And then my, um, my mother's uh, side, uh, my mom is the youngest of 12 children in the Whedon family. And my dad is the third oldest of his family. So I'm used to big families and all of us love to sing praises. We come from a family of singers and lovers of Jesus who the legacy is just rich. And so I love to carry that on. Um, and he has brought me from a mighty long way. But Calvin used to always say, Mick, you can do more than just sing. And so I like to sing. <laughs> I believe God put that in my heart and that's just my comfortable lane. But I do have plenty to say. I've been here a long time on this campus and I have plenty to say. I just like to say it in music. <laughs> um, Psalm um, 30 gives us so much rich um, information and it begins with, I will extol you, O Lord. And to extol, the definition is to praise enthusiastically. And I have so much to praise God for enthusiastically. And I just, I just, there's times when you, you know, there's seasons uh, when you say, I love you, I love you. But when you really are exploding about something that God has done in your life or who he is in your life, you just gotta say, I love you, Lord, and you throw your hands up. <laughs> So I just praise God for his love to me. I want to leave with you. I want to give you three things to think about today. Um, one, always be an open book. And I'm going to share some things with you today that some of you know, some of you may not know about me. But always be an open book. Number two, know your spiritual ID. Your identification in God is so rich. And number three, walk in his favor and authority. He's given us so much favor. He pours it out on us. And you heard that read in the text earlier that his favor, it, it lasts for a lifetime. So our spiritual ID, we are secure in Christ. And Calvin used to say, I am born of God and the evil one cannot touch me. And I accept it in Christ. I'm complete in him and I am significant in him. I mean everything to him. I'm salt and light of the earth. I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. And I, uh, a lot of times I tell gospel choir when songs are, when they're not getting the songs right, just quite right, and it's so, so plain, I say, put some salt on it, put some hot sauce on there. And when that flavor comes, that flavor just enriches. And so that's who we are here in the earth. We are the salt and light of the earth. That's what God tells us, amen? So he is also my shield. He's my healer. He's my helper. And, um, and all through my life, I can see God. It's just a weaving through my life. He's carried me, just like he's carrying us through this difficult, challenging season right now. Um, I was a good student in school. I love learning. And I had some good teachers. I love to be pleasing to my parents and my family. The village was there for me. Um, as a child, I was compliant. And if you know the definition of that, that's to obey reluctantly. <laughs> so I was obedient and... Um, and oftentimes reluctant though, but God. And as a teenager, I was rebellious and I was unrecognizable to my family. There was times when my parents didn't even know who I was because I was following instead of leading like God called me to do. There's times uh, when you're supposed to follow, but that was not the time. It, all, it nearly landed me in juvenile detention home. But then I had such a rich, um, family, strong family and strong village there. My grandfather was a great influence to me. And he um, told me one Sunday morning, if you want to go to college, I'll help you. And he stood by his word. And when I graduated, my whole family, the whole village was there. And on top of my uh, graduation cap, I had in tape, amen. So when I took a bow, you saw amen right, right there. <laughs> um, 
But the, uh, my parents are in their 80s, both of them are, and I just thank God for them. I still pull on their wisdom, their godly wisdom, and their love to me. And the love for family has poured over to me and to the ministry that I have. And everybody's my family if they're a family of God. Amen? We're the beloved, in, the beloved children of God. Uh, so I want to just talk about how we walk in his favor and his authority. God is a good, good father. And in, in Psalm 30, we read about that. And his anger, it lasts just for a moment, but his favor, it lasts for a lifetime. And I thank God that when I cry out for his mercy, he hears me and his mercy and his love overflows. Um, he's loosened my, my sackcloth and ashes. It says sackcloth, if you know anything about it, it's, it's made normally out of goat hair or coarse camel hair. And so that probably doesn't feel too good, but he's clothed me in gladness. So I received that. Um, so when he talks about mourning, I, I know the pain of mourning. I know the pain of mourning my brother who was two years older than me and he passed away my senior year of college, three weeks before graduation. My brother Mike and I miss him still today. I know the, the, the pain of mourning my grandparents who are with the Lord today, both sides. And I know the pain of mourning my husband, who just this December uh, will be five years that he's with the Lord. And I looked at it with a new per perspective now that he received his upgrade. And that's the hope that we all have in Christ, amen? As, as Christians, as, as believers, as children of God, we look forward to that day when we get our upgrade, we receive our upgrade and we go to be with the Lord. And so that's where Pastor Cal is now. And uh, he always encouraged me. Um, when I was a senior in college, so I was baptized at the age of seven, but as a senior in college is when I really was found by God. He found me and I, I wanted a new change in my life. And so I, as I changed, my life changed, I prayed for a saved mate. Ladies, I did not pray for a husband because I didn't feel like I was ready for a husband. <laughs> but I did pray for a saved mate, somebody that I can go to the movies with or to weddings with and just have fun with and go through life with, but not a husband just yet. And uh, when the Lord brought my husband into my life, it was amazing. We learned scriptures. So, I mean, he was my teacher. God put him in my life for such a time. He was three and a half years younger than me but 10 years my senior spiritually. He was a spiritual giant. And so we dated just for six weeks. And <laughs> my, I surprised my family and surprised friends and everybody who probably thought we were having a baby, but we were not. Uh, six weeks later, we were engaged. I had a ring on my finger. And uh, four months later, we were married. Three children later and a beautiful uh, bonus daughter and four hilarious grandchildren and they're they always keep me smiling they're three four five and six years old even today and they just keep me smiling but 35 years later all the wonderful memories that i have i keep them close to my heart and i thank god for carrying me from a mighty long way um just out of nowhere pastor calvin started falling and when we went to go find out what was going on he was diagnosed with glioblastoma, brain cancer. And so he um, went through that. We all went through the season together. He showed us how to do it too. And when he passed away, man, did we have a home going, that home going with something else. And um, it was full of music, just like he would have wanted and full of the word of God. And we re rejoiced and we celebrated. Of course we miss him, but his, his words and his legacy lives on and he continues to encourage me today. He used to always say, God can trust you. And he would say that to our friends and he would say that to people when, he, when they would um, be, you know, when he would be counseling because he, was lo he loved one-on-one -on -one counseling. Um, and so he's trusted me to be a wife. He's trusted me to be a mother. He's trusted me with my grandchildren and he's trusted me to be a youth pastor. He's trusted me to be a shepherd of a small flock years, uh, for several years before Calvin went home to be with the Lord. And um, he's trusted me to be a teacher of kindergartners for 10 years. And I just really, I can't thank him enough for the experiences that I've had in my life. Um, 
I feel like I'm a blessed woman of God. I know that's the truth. The third one, to walk in his favor and authority with love and grace, because God gives us love and grace. He does not lord it over us. Um, he wants us to imitate him and walk like he walks. And with love and grace, we can walk in favor that he blesses us with and the favor and the authority that he gives us. So I'm eternally grateful that I am a rich, blessed woman of God in the royal family of God. And he's the King of Kings. He's the Lord of Lords. He's the Prince of Peace. And I just thank him. I declare that you are my God and I will give you thanks forever. Thank you.